I would like to take some time to speak on ear development. Now you might say, Mo, what's ear development? Basically training your ears to emulate what you hear. That's what ear training is. We're gonna work on some techniques that I use to uh, help me identify notes. Also to help me just deep, deeper into this horn. So one thing I do to help develop my ears more, um, I'll think of a reference of a song. Lots of times I, I can think of like, a, it could be any song, cheesy song, your favorite song, whatever song you know well enough that you're singing it in that same key as a song that you know. So how about uh, Star Spangled Banner? Da, 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 right? Da, like I know that note. That's a G. So whenever I hear it, da, I'm like, da, da, da. That's a G. So <laughs> I recall from songs that I can think of, and I'll go to that. That that's also helps me find out what key I'm in right away, actually. It's a pretty cool idea to have association like that with something. Another thing I'll do is I'll think of a song, and I'll think about where it is in relationship to a piano. Now, this is important. To be able to know where you are on a piano and on your horn and match it up is a really important skill to have. For example, if I'm to play this note, right, I can know right away, I'm saying, oh, that's a G. I hear Kevin playing a G on the piano and I'm saying, yeah, that's a G. Cause I thought to myself, Star Spangled Banner, da, 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 right off the bat. We'll try another note. Right, that note is a D. Da, 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 da. Right? Starts on a D, I'm thinking of it. Association with notes and songs can really get you close into that key center right, right away. Another thing that I like to do is just literally emulate my favorite players and pick up techniques that they have. One thing I love about Clifford Brown is that the way he would tongue. And it was so beautiful when he would do that. Literally would play lines. And I was wondering, where did I hear that before? It's from Ben Webster. Found out it was a saxophone technique. <laughs> so when you flutter tongue like that, and you can have this fluffy kind of song, sound, a fluffy, fluff, 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 fluff. That's what I think of, just like feathers and just fluff, 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 fluff. fluff. What's happening is my tongue is acting as a valve, cutting the air off and letting it back through. So your tongue is so important. It plays a really important part in this whole process because as you're playing, you can stop the air midway. <laughs> it can be really fun to implement these techniques when you're playing. Now, one thing about uh, developing your ear is the battle between musicians all the time, whether you have perfect pitch or relative pitch. Everyone thinks I have perfect pitch. I know I don't have perfect pitch. I have extremely good relative pitch. And the difference between that is that I, I know right from myself, I can say, uh, I start to play, and if I listen, I'm implementing all these techniques to get to that note, like I'm saying, to think of a song reference or 
thinking about the piano, where I'm at in the piano, what register, different things like that. It's not just like, just some people can just tell you like, oh, you're, you're talking in D Dorian. <laughs> like, it's not that, my ear is not, I don't have perfect pitch like that. I have extremely good relative pitch that um, rarely lets me down. So relative pitch is, uh, is not a bad thing to have and it's something you should shoot for. You don't have to shoot for perfect pitch because you would know if you have it already. <laughs> One thing I like to work on when trying to figure out what a note is, I think to myself, how far is the distance between that note, between the next note? Mm -hmm. And that is uh, essentially called an interval, the distance between one note and the other note. So when I'm thinking about that, I'll say to myself, okay, I know that this note is here in the staff. Let's stay on G since we're dealing with G. She in the style. If I go up just one interval, I can go to an A. I know that that sound is not lower than where I was. So I'm gonna say, oh, G, and go up one interval to A. So this is what you gotta think, ascending and descending pitches from from each note will help you know which way to, to, to think of for the intervals, which way they're going, you know? Because if it's going up, then you're gonna be going up with the intervals. If it's going down, then you're gonna be going down. <music> Ear development is a real important part, especially when implementing it, when playing with an ensemble. One thing that you have to know is that everyone is doing their thing, right? And you have to focus on each instrument equally. This could be difficult sometimes, especially when you're just focused on trying to play the right notes. One thing that I like to do is open my ears totally, clean my palate first, and then slowly start to let each instrument come in to, to my senses and then I can have more control over it. I separate the, each instrument in my head as, as I start to hear it. So I'm on the bandstand and then I'll hear keys and then I'll put the keys as they're here. And I hear the drums, drums are here, bass is here. It's almost like I'm mixing it in my mind, you know? That really helps me a lot to be able to be on the bandstand and actually not get overwhelmed and still communicate with my band members because it's all call and response. I'm reacting to what someone's doing or they're reacting to something that I did. Or, so that's, you know, really have your receptors open and don't have blinders on. Just be worried about yourself and I just gotta play the right notes. I'm gonna, oh, it's so bad. You really have to be open to the oneness between you and everything around you. One thing that you want to focus on is blending with each other. When you're blending an ensemble, it's just going to gel. Everything's going to fall into its right place. One thing I like to do with that is, uh, instead of just focusing again just on my sound, if I'm playing with somebody, I'm literally trying to match a timbre, you know, a uh, uh, feeling. I want every little if we want to breathe with them, even if we never rehearsed with a breathe. Like I'm so in tune to what they're doing and what I'm doing that it's gelling as one that I do get this often when I play with different sax players or just different musicians. They say, man, I feel like we've been playing together our whole life. It's the intent behind it of actually going through and trying to match them, trying to blend with them, trying to sound as one. So once you're playing with one musician and you're blending, then you do the same concept with everybody. That's how no one overpowers anyone and you just sound like a, a good time. <laughs> I really think right now that listening is, uh, should be a top priority. Retaining and regurgitating as much information as possible that you, you can get your hands on. We're living in a different time now. When I was coming up, Music wasn't 
as accessible. <laughs> I literally remember having to go to a record store and rushing to get there before the album was sold out. Or really going to dig deep in some record shop to try to find a, a record that I heard about that someone told me changed their life. And I wanted my life changed as well. Nowadays, you can just go to YouTube. You can go to Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. Shout out to Tidal, Jay-Z. Nowadays, there's so many places where you can get access to this music. There really is no excuse. So if you're really serious about this, first of all, you have to have the passion about it. No one can force you to do this. You're watching this video, so obviously you're passionate about it and you're looking to take your trumpet playing to the next level.